Homo neanderthalensis, a tantalizingly similar human species very much like ourselves physically, cognitively, and perhaps socially, but it was not always thought to be so. Neanderthal was first discovered in 1829, when a child's skull in Belgium was found. However, it wasn't until 1856, wherein the Neander Valley, where Neanderthal gets its name from, a collection of bones from the Feldhofer Cave, Germany, were discovered, and then picked up by Professor William King, and presented to the 1863 meeting of the British Association for the Advancement of Science that Neanderthal was even officially recognised as a new species. Although Neanderthal was accepted by most of the scientific community as a new species, during the first 30 years or so, many derogatory remarks were made by even the supposedly top minds of the day. There was even a proposal by naturalist and biologist Ernest Haeckel for Neanderthal to be called Homo stupidus because of its supposedly primitive appearance. Certainly a cruel joke, which thankfully never came to fruition. Nevertheless, some aspects of this mockery exist to this day. Knuckle-scraping, slope-headed Neanderthal. Insults which to this day get thrown around with not much thought to describe someone as stupid, slow, or primitive, and have continued to be used to this very day. Neanderthal was portrayed as a bloodthirsty gorilla-like creature that wielded a club and was a cannibal, as can be seen in this famous picture by Kupka and Buhl, 1909. This demeaning image of Neanderthal stuck within the public mind, and I think even today some people are not too aware of what Neanderthal was really like, but attitudes are certainly changing. However, during the 20th century, it wasn't really until the 70s that Neanderthal was being properly accepted as an intelligent creature, which could actually hunt and live for itself rather than scavenging and eating its own relatives. And it wasn't until the 80s before it was even proven that Neanderthals could speak. Sterling work by people such as Clive Gamble and Finlayson in the 80s and 90s was what really made us begin to appreciate Neanderthals, and I strongly suggest you check out their work. We didn't just begin to respect Neanderthal more simply because we began to understand that it was not a simple creature. We also knew that it was incredibly well adapted to its environment. Homo neanderthalensis existed approximately from 300,000 to 39,000 years ago, and this involved some harsh environments that required social interaction and coordination, as well as the tools, clothing and know-how to be able to overcome such conditions. It was these conditions which beat back our own Homo sapien ancestors, but the Neanderthals struggled on, even within small communities. I do wonder if Kupka and Ball would have been so quick to demean the Neanderthal if they'd known what we know now in the 21st century. The latest genetic testing shows us that a proportion of today's European population have up to 3% Neanderthal DNA. We interbred with Neanderthals any time up to 39,000 years ago. We have a little piece of them inside us, and to some very tiny extent, we are Neanderthals. I think a very small proportion of the prehistoric archaeology community has some slight sense of guilt of how we've portrayed Neanderthals in the past. I think this probably best portrayed in Papagiani and Morse's book, The Neanderthals Rediscovered, and I have plugged this before, but I will plug it again because it is quite uh, an amazing book. It's 2015, so it's a a few years of research behind, but most of the stuff is up to date. And they do have a section about how poorly Neanderthals were treated in uh, regards in the 19th and 20th century. Neanderthal, as we understand it now, was able to communicate with one another, presumably through some form of language, maybe some physical gestures as well. What is truly fascinating about Neanderthals is that they created art as well. And it's been quite a recent topic of debate. During some excavations in Gorham's Cave, for example, in Gibraltar, there was the hashtag, the Neanderthal hashtag, and scratched very clearly on the wall. And you can also find things such as eagle talons, which have been shaped and worn as personal adornment. So they have both parietal and mobility art, which is quite fascinating, as the only other uh, human to make that is us, ourselves. Neanderthals are so strikingly similar to us, the only difference really is some brain morphology changes. Although Neanderthal does have a larger brain on average than the average Homo sapiens, new research has shown that the cerebellum is very different and is much smaller to Homo sapiens ones. So 
possibly Neanderthals were worse at adapting to change and certain cognitive functions. I'm not going to go too specific into it because this is not my area of expertise, but I will link the article where I got this information from and you can decide for yourselves. It's a very new area of research and with all new areas of research, especially with Neanderthals, trends tend to come and go, but this one does look quite promising and I think this might be a keeper in terms of Neanderthal research. I think Neanderthal is now publicly on the rise. Although poor old Neanderthal is now extinct, we can continue on its legacy, and I will certainly continue to make terrible videos exonerating these magnificent creatures. I will see you next time on Archaeology 101. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.